Dun, dun, dun. Uh, yeah. Dun, dun. Uh, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> you have to come inside right now. There were four of them. What do we say? You shouldn't make things up when we're talking about. Can you open the door, please? So, in your career, you've taken on zombies, a Blade Runner, James Bond, yeah. Thanos. Yeah. But this film has you up against maybe your greatest adversary yet. Yeah. A small child. <laughs> How does your approach change when you're, you know, menacing a little girl? When I meet children, I typically like to kneel down because I don't like to intimidate children. I realize that, you know, to children, my size can be quite imposing. Throughout my life, I've just never been a, a type of guy who liked to be intimidating to people. And I have such a soft spot for children. With Kristen, I see her as my peer because she's there. We're in the same film and we're acting together. But also, I understand that she's a child and the pressure is different. So I just wanted to make sure that she always felt com comfortable and never felt like I was intimidating because that would just make her more nervous. So I just wanted to make sure that she was comfortable and knew that I was very supportive of her. What was it like having Jonathan and Ben play your parents? Well, they were so nice. They took care of me on set. They are excellent actors. It was really fun getting to know them and having the feeling as them as my parents. I feel like the real family is me, Jonathan and Ben but I really haven't gotten a chance to see them because we shot this movie last year, but I got to see them today, which really makes me happy. Mm -hmm. And actually, later on today, we're going to go see a Broadway show together. We're gonna go see Wicked. Wow. I'm so excited. In my head, I was just like, I just wanna become friends with Kristen, and that must be what it's most like to be a parent, you know? And I think that's what we did. We really were like a little, a, th a, a, trio? a trio of, a trio of three friends. <laughs> And it was her first movie, so she was like learning on the job. Yeah. And it was really inspiring and beautiful to watch her kind of figure out like, oh, it's like playing, playing pretend, and then understand that it's actually a craft and something that we take seriously and that Knight takes seriously. Mm -hmm. And he would remind her, you know, this is, this is a job and we're telling a story and you're, you're playing pretend, but for a reason and watching her go from novice to uh, a young Meryl Streep uh, at the end of the movie was really, it was so inspiring. It's hard for adults to survive a film set. And she has this strength in her that was just really amazing to be around. Each child where they are is, 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 is important, you know? So let's take Abigail from Signs and then Haley from Sixth Sense and then Kristen here in Knock at the Cabin. They're very different. Abigail's five and Kristen is eight and, and Haley was 10. That's eons from each other. Right. Abigail at five, I just say it. Your dad is sad because he thinks this is the last time you're gonna eat together and she just starts feeling emotion. And then Haley, his dad was an actor, so he was in a different place where he could actually feel when he was faking it. Oh. And so he doesn't like that feeling. And whereas Kristen, she still thinks faking is a good thing. So I had to talk to her about there's 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 a, a bad way to trick us by making us laugh for the wrong the wrong way that the character wouldn't have done it that way you might have done it that way and that so you don't do that and by the way same conversation i have with superstars <laughs> is you know don't don't go for that color that the character couldn't get to yeah. even if it's going to cause a reaction you can't do that stay on the, the spectrum of the emotions that the character can get to just come from the character so teaching Kristen to think the thoughts of when. She drew a picture of me directing her and then there was a little bubble from me saying, think the thoughts, think the thoughts. She, <laughs> she gave, me that, <laughs> gave me that picture. Your family must choose to willingly sacrifice one of the three of you to prevent the apocalypse. What was the scene in Knock at the Cabin when it hits you, this is a movie I want to be a part of? The first scene is my favorite scene. It was scene, the kissing actually. scene, wasn't it? It was the scene. <laughs> What kissing scene? Oh, no, it got, it got, it got, it got deleted. Uh, it was reading that scene with Leonard and when that scene feels iconic to me. On the page, I was like, oh wow, this is a long seven, eight page scene between these two completely opposite, completely unique characters. That isn't a scene that I'm in, but that was one that I felt like, oh, this is, this is, this movie's gonna be special. And then as far as the playing of it, there wasn't one scene that made me wanna do it. It just gave me this sinking feeling in my stomach when I was reading the script. I had kind of like a pain in my gut of the idea of what this choice would be and getting to play out this relationship of this family and I'd never been married in anything before, 
and had never had a child in anything before. So also the idea of getting to work with Kristen for the first time with a young actress playing our daughter was also really exciting to me. When I got the script, it was very late at night and I had traveled home. And I think I had like two hours to read the script. <laughs> and so it was like, I think 11 or 12 at night and I'm already ready to go to bed. As I'm reading, the first thought in my head is, God, there's a lot of dialogue, man. This and then the more I read into it and I realize how emotional uh, this film is going to be, I was like, wow, it's just, just blown away. Um, and I felt like immediate anxiety, like I have to have this role. I need this role. <laughs> and I called Knight and I said, I love this, man. This is what I've been looking for. I, please, I, I, what do I have to do to get this role? And he said, I want you for this role. And I was like, I can't, I can't believe this. And wow. This is crazy. We were called and are united by a common vision which has now become a command that we cannot ignore. For me, just, it's an, it's an M. Night movie. So like just hearing that I had a, to do an audition tape for it, I was like, oh yeah, yep. And then the scenes I thought were really interesting. I didn't know what was happening. I was trying to piece together the plot, which I couldn't piece together, which he wouldn't even let me know when we zoomed together a week later for an hour and 45. And I didn't know the thrust of the story until I was reading that script for the first time once he had offered me the the part. Once I was reading it, it was kind of a no-brainer, but I was also terrified because every every page turn was, what? We're gonna, okay, uh, sure. Okay, I'm gonna act that. Like it was, it was intimidating. I was scared when I read it. I was scared when we made it. And I'm, I'm still a little bit scared now. <laughs> I'm ex I'm excited for the reaction. I don't ex expect anything, uh, but I am a bit like, ooh, how's it gonna how's it gonna go down? He knows that, and he, I think he just he described it the other day as he's a lightning rod. Yes, like so, so. I was like, nice, nice <laughs> lightning. Hey, hey, night, lightning rod. <laughs> what I feel about the premise of the book is it's one of those once in many many year ideas. It's it's incredible the idea that Paul came up with for the book and. And I definitely, I wish I had come up with it myself, kind of feeling. And but I feel such love for it and, and excitement about thinking about it that I was like, I would love to face the challenge of getting it to the end of whether they they do or don't. I want I want to get to the end of the jury, the end to the verdict, and see which one it is and how they would come to that. And it was so exciting for me as both in being inspired by the premise of the book, but also as a writing challenge to, to get it there. I want to know how I, you know, can get the audience to that moment there to be with them at that moment. We're not choosing anyone. We're not sacrificing anyone. Not now, not ever. Even if it means the death of everyone else in the world. Yes. Even if I believe the world was at stake, which I don't, that's what it means. Your films often deal with a test of faith. Why do you find that theme so interesting? Why do you come back to that? I mean, I guess it's a, it's a trying to find some meaning, you know, in the things that we do. You know, if you think about like Unbreakable is about a character who has no meaning in his life or he doesn't find his place. And I guess these are all kind of iterations on the characters realizing that they're, they're meaningful, that they have a uh, impact. Even with our foundation and, and when I talk to people, I really genuinely believe in people's own agency. And so these are kind of fictional uh, fantasy versions of characters realizing how powerful they are. I think I tend to believe as a person, as Jonathan. And uh, I felt like I had something to say about that. Artistically, I felt like connected to that part of the character. It's funny because in the initial draft of the script and a lot of things that we shot, there was a lot more about Eric's unwavering belief and the way that the vision that Eric has uh, at the first murder, um, the light that he sees through the window, this was more extreme in the script as written. And in the edit, they've, I think, smartly dialed back this extreme difference between skepticism of Andrew and belief in Eric. It was fun to play, and I think after seeing the film, I think Knight in the edit sort of calibrated that belief beautifully in that he was a believer, but ultimately he believed in the love of his family and particularly his daughter, most of all. And the way that he tied it into that was really beautiful. Do you really think it's all just a coincidence? I think it's all coincidence. Some horrible, unexplainable coincidence. Or it has to be a trick. 
I have to believe that. It was interesting for me. Obviously, Andrew doesn't believe in anything, and he refuses to believe in any of what they're saying. He is the skeptic in the room at all points. He's fiercely trying to defend his family and negotiate his way out of out of that. And I think for me,、um, I grew up. Uh, quite religious and kind of massively, massively rejected all of that in, in my teens, and then probably a year before this movie, I started to not re-explore Christianity, but just the idea that, that I might believe in something like a higher power or,、right. or something. And then arrived at playing Andrew, and I was like. Oh, I kind of had to stop on that journey for a little bit and just be like, no, I don't believe in anything again. Not 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 because I'm a method actor, just because it was, just it felt like essential that Andrew. There was no, there's no spirituality to him in in the film. So、uh, yeah, kind of messed with my own little moment there. Do you like scary movies? Have have you seen any? Yeah, I've seen I've seen a lot.、Um, I really don't like them. They're just a little too thrilly and creepy. <laughs> Have you seen any of them nights? Yeah, I one that I really liked was The Village. It was just so emotional. I kind of, sort of just sank in. Did you see the twist coming? Did you know what was going to happen?、Mm, no. It's it's a good surprise, right? <laughs> <laughs> So there's an interesting conversation going on right now about the Academy Awards and how they have ignored horror. Yeah.、Um, wasn't that long ago that you told us Ghost Story that got six、mm-hmm. Academy Award、yeah. nominations? Do you think that their opinions have evolved over the years,、mm-hmm. or was it something special about the Sixth Sense where it was able to even transcend that genre? You know, so many factors involved with that whole. Whole world、yeah. of you know awards, accolades, all of that stuff, you know, and、uh, w- even one of them is when you release in the year. I don't pay attention to any of that. So、uh, for me,、uh, you know, I choose for my movies to be where they have the most oxygen, where I can, where the most people can hear me in this culture. This process should stay between me and the story and the characters. I tell my daughters, who are now professional artists, about con- you know construct your life in a way. That that noise, the, the cheers and the boos, have nothing to do with you and your relationship to your art form. That will make you happy in your life, and you will you will become better and better at relating to your your particular craft. One is musician, and one's a filmmaker. And I promise you, that's the thing you want to protect. It's so seductive to hear what they think of you, and don't 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 do that. Don't do that. And so secretly, I feel very happy that I'm in the kind of、uh, discarded genre.、Um, <laughs> I like thinking of it that way. That I am an entertainer.、Um, hey, nothing to look at over here. We're just <laughs> making, you know, scary movies for audiences. Nothing to look at over here. And then bringing everything I can to to the artistry of the storytelling because I love cinema that much. I think that's you know the beauty of horror. What you're saying exactly. It's you know the discarded genre. Nobody's looking at it. You can hide so much. You know、yes. you can subvert so much.、Yes. You can tell so much more, and you can reach people. I love the way you, you describe that. The subversiveness of the genre is so beautiful because they are talking about deep things. In fact, things that are very disturbing and meaningful, and but you can hide it in this kind of playful way. I've been, you know, showing the movie in different countries and you know premiering it, and then I meet influencers from each country, late teens, early twenties, and they're seeing my movies for the first time. You know, they'll be like, "I saw one of your old movies. It's called Signs," and you know, <laughs> and they're like, you know, they, they was like before they were born or whatever, you know,、sure, and they're watching them and they're taken by that there's meaning in it. They're feeling excited by having these subjects touched on with respect. In the middle of being entertained, and they take it away, and they're thinking about it, and it's staying with them. So, it's reinforcing for me that you know, we we can entertain each other, and we can have meaningful conversations at the same time. Are we gonna sing along? Yes, yeah, of course. I wanna put on my 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 boogie shoes. Yeah. Boogie shoes. Yeah. Why did you pick it? <laughs> <laughs> I knew this、uh, th- that, that、uh, there was going to be a particular song that meant something to these three individuals deeply, and it should represent a little bit of them teaching the girl about joy and life, and you know, celebration. It needed to be a little bit silly. It narrowed down to two songs, and I played it for the three of them. It was a choice between "Jump Around" by Criss Cross、oh. and Boogie Shoes. He played "Jump Around" first, and I was like, "Okay, okay." I didn't want to kind of like show him what I thought. When I played Boogie Shoes. 
I, I just saw this kind of energy start to happen between the three of them. I like instantly got chills and welled up and was like, okay, this, this has got the right kind of, I suppose because it's, it's, it's got love in it, that song has, and I could imagine like us all really enjoying singing it together. On an episode of Glee, I was the coach of Vocal Adrenaline, and Alex Newell sang Boogie Shoes. So that was my first intimate interaction with that song. It's just a jam. Yeah. I love it. Doom, doom, doom. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> I really didn't know that song before. It felt a little weird seeing me sing it. Because, I mean, I was a bit off too. Did you get tired of it though, just having to sing it again and again? Oh yeah, very tired. <laughs>